Good morning. Good to see everyone this morning. It's going to be a beautiful day today. If you want to be outside, sounds like a good day to be out. Thank the Lord for his presence, for his goodness. Uh, just to note, Comcast is going to be coming between 8 and 10. We had a tree fall down out here uh, near Shriver's Cross the Road, interrupted the power lines, interrupted Comcast. So we're trying to get back into live stream. And so they're able to come this morning. So, but uh, I think we're on Facebook or something, Brant, right? Is that right? Not, we're not, we're not on yet. Okay. The tech team's taking care of this. Thank you again for everything. Shall we stand for prayer and our call to worship? Father, we thank you for your goodness. You are the same yesterday, today, and forever. Regardless of the weather, though we like certain kinds of weather, Father, you know you are the same. You love us. You care for us. And we pray that by your spirit, you will help us to understand more about you. And that you will draw us to yourself and you'll grant us the faith to believe and trusting you uh, with all things, with our lives and allowing you to work within us and through us for your glory and your kingdom. Thank you for your people able to come. We especially pray for those who may be ill and sick. We are continuing to pray through this COVID uh, pandemic and all that's going on, especially India, Lord. It's a terrible thing we're hearing and we pray for a great work of your spirit and grace and mercy and healing uh, upon the world. And that you will use this to draw people to yourself, Lord. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Our call to worship. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. Let Israel say. Let the house of Aaron say. Let those who fear the Lord say. Shall we turn to hymn number 35 in our maroon hymnal? G
may be seated. Shall we turn to 177? Shall we turn to hymn number, or rather hymn number, Psalm 40. Psalm 40. Psalm 40. I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the mud and mire, he set my feet on, a, feet on a rock and gave me a firm place to stand. He put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see and fear and put their trust in the Lord. Blessed is the man who makes the Lord his trust, who does not look to the proud, to those who turn aside to false gods. Many, O Lord, my God, are the wonders you have done. The things you plan for us, no one can recount to you. Were I to speak and tell of them, they would be too many to declare. Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but my ears you have pierced. Burnt offerings and sin offerings you did not require. Then I said, Here I am, I have come. It is written about me in the scroll. I desire to do your will, O my God. Your law is within my heart. I proclaim righteousness in the great assembly. I do not seal my lips. As you know, O Lord, I do not hide your righteousness in my heart. I speak of your faithfulness and salvation. I do not conceal your love and your truth from the great assembly. 
Do not, do not withhold your mercy from me, O Lord. May your love and your truth always protect me. For troubles without number surround me. My sins have overtaken me, and I cannot see. They are more than the hairs of my head, and my heart fails within me. Be pleased, O Lord, to save me. O come, qu come quickly to help me. May all who seek to take my life be put to shame and confusion. May all who desire my ruin be turned back in disgrace. May those who say to me, Aha, aha, be appalled at their own shame. But may all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. May those who love your salvation always say, The Lord be exalted. Yet I am poor and needy. May the Lord think of me. You are my help and my deliverer. O oh my God, do not delay. Thank the Lord. We can read his word in our language. Shall we turn once again in our maroon hymnals to hymn number 87? have quite a few prayer requests. Continue to pray for Terry and Cheryl White, for Priscilla Baumgartner, John and Ellie Fisher, Ken Weimert, uh, Rick Plummer, uh, John Shuck, and continue to pray for uh, Doug and Brenda Williams' daughter Grace is doing okay. Brian Downs, be praying for him. Going to have the tongue surgery. I haven't received notice that he has. Removing part of his tongue. And to be in therapy. And be praying for Brian Downs. A pastor. And for Margaret Edwards. Keep praying for Margaret Edwards. Brianna's grandmother. And. Kaylee. Semendiger. Had her procedure done. She's doing well. Trust the Lord for Kaylee. And Sharon Snavely's going to Hershey Thursday, praying for Sharon Thursday. For Shannon McCall and her test she's going through. Trust the Lord for Shannon. And uh, Steve Kensinger had a CAT scan, some other tests, and the 19th, he's scheduled for a stress test in late in the morning and then receives his evaluation May 27th. To be praying for Steve Kensinger. And Shirley 
Broombaugh and Janice Furry, Furry's sister, Joyce Pasca, passed away uh, a couple nights ago after a long battle with cancer. Pray for that family. Trust the Lord for everyone's uh, health. Doug had some tests too. Trust the Lord for Doug. Any other prayer requests? Gas, yeah, Cindy England, put it on the prayer chain. Cindy England, pray for Cindy. Trust the Lord for Cindy. Anyone else? Shall we pray? Father, thank you that you are a father who loves all people. You desire all people to know you, to know your son, to be born of your spirit. And you're a father who cares for people. And many times people cry out to you, you make yourself known. And it, it is the work of your spirit to draw people to yourself. So we pray in each of these needs, Father, you know the heart's of each of these individuals and their families perfectly. And we pray that by your spirit in each of these lives, you will use these situations they're going through to draw these people closer to you, to know you, Father, to know Jesus, your son, as Lord and Savior, to allow your Holy Spirit to work in their lives. Draw people closer to yourself, Father, through all of the pain and the circumstances they go through. We pray this for the world in which we live and the, and the COVID and the virus and all that's going around and various diseases. We pray that you will draw people to yourself to realize our lostness without you and to come to know and experience the new birth of your spirit through the death and resurrection of Jesus, your son. You have the power to do this. And so we submit to you when you pray for the work of your spirit in each of these lives. We trust you for those who are recovering from the loss of loved ones. For those who are uh, seriously ill and with cancer and all kinds of treatments people are going through. We pray that you will oversee all these lives. And again, thank you for your presence and love. That with you there is life. With you, dear Lord, there is hope. With you, there's a future and tomorrow in knowing Jesus, your son is our Lord and Savior. Thank you for giving us life and giving us a hope and days to look forward to. Help us to continue to pray through the, all that we're going through in this world and our nation. Help us, Lord. Use these days to bring people to yourself and help us to be ready for your coming. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, the teens today will be in the, and those teens that are here can come into our young adult class uh, today. There's no class with uh, Ron and Missy Baker today. Keep praying for them. And next week is what? Can any of the young people tell me what next week is? What's next Sunday? Mother's Day. <laughs> don't forget Mother's Day I think uh, was it Clay Shriver down here had the flower that stand out a couple years ago remember Mother's Day or you'll never forget it something like that kind of a humorous statement uh, not so humorous if you forget <laughs> remember Mother's Day thank the Lord for our mothers there's no uh, no youth meeting tonight uh, and there will be no Sunday night service next week we have a service in the morning but no Sunday night services on Mother's Day Father's Day and so on and to think of any of the other announcements I thank you for your prayers and faithfulness in giving and support of the church and ministries Shall we turn to the Gospel of John?
John chapter 3. We are in verse 16 to the end of the chapter, John chapter 3. John 3, verse 16, to the end of the chapter. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because he has not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but men love darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that his deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that it may be seen plainly that what he has done has been done through God. After this, Jesus and his disciples went out into the Judean countryside where he spent some time with them and baptized. Now John also was baptizing at Ann near Salem because there was plenty of water and people were constantly coming to be baptized. This was before John was put in prison. An argument developed between some of John's disciples and a certain Jew over the, a matter of ceremonial washing. They came to John and said to him, Rabbi, that man who was with you on the other side of the Jordan, the one you testified about, well, He's baptizing, and everyone's going to him. To this John replied, A man can receive only what is given him from heaven. You yourselves can testify that I said, I am not the Christ, but am set ahead of him. The bride belongs to the bridegroom. The friend who attends the bridegroom waits and listens for him and is full of joy when he hears the bridegroom's voice. That joy is mine and is now complete. He must become greater. I must become less. The one who comes from above is above all. The one who is from the earth belongs to the earth and speaks as one from the earth. The one who comes from heaven is above all. He testifies to what he has seen and heard, but no one accepts his testimony. The man who has accepted it has certified that God is truthful. For the one whom God has sent speaks the words of God, for God gives the spirit without limit. The Father loves the Son and has placed everything in His hands. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life, but whoever rejects the Son will not see life, for God's wrath remains on him. Again, thank the Lord for His word. We can read. to one another, forgiving each other, just as Christ, God, forgave you.
Hope everyone got a, everyone get their cup, did you? Anybody need a cup? You have your cup. There's that little cellophane on the top. They try to pull off first to get the bread, and then the purple, whatever color you call it, is next. The word of God reads, For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Shall we partake, remembering our Lord Jesus? Again, we thank you, Father, for who you are and the giving of your Son and Lord Jesus, who you are and voluntarily coming. Thank you, dear Lord, for the gift of yourself to us in your death and resurrection in Jesus' name. In the same way, our Lord Jesus, after supper, supper took the cup saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. And carefully, as you hold on the bottom, and peel it back. Shall we partake remembering our Lord Jesus? Thank you, Father, for the power of the blood of your Son that you offered you offered yourself, Jesus, once for all. And by your blood, you can cleanse us from all sin. And as we walk in the light and have fellowship with you, the blood of Christ will cleanse us from all sin. It's a wonderful reality of the blood and the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, that the power of Christ the power of his blood, his death and resurrection is just as powerful today as it was when you first rose from the dead. Thank you, Lord, for your presence and goodness. And by your spirit, open our minds and hearts to the truths of thy word as only you can. I pray in Jesus' name for your glory and kingdom. Amen. Hopefully everybody be back next week and feeling better. I'll try to get this working. For some reason, it follows me the whole service and comes to my part. Okay. Here we go. Uh, we have to. Re we try to remember that the Gospel of John is written a little differently than the synoptics. Is one of the synoptics Matthew, Mark, and Luke written? You can see things in order. If you have uh, a Bible that gives you Matthew, Mark, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you can see how similar they are. And uh, what's in each book and what's not. But uh, remember the purpose of this book. One of the purposes of this book. The chief main purpose of this book. And John twenty thirty, Jesus did many other miraculous signs in the presence of his disciples. Which are not recorded in this book. 
But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. The Lord wants us to have life. And this section here uh, is a different section in the sense it's probably the most beloved verse, most used verse by many people in, in the Bible, God's Word, John 3.16. And it, it reveals to, to us some uh, realities about the Lord and his heart toward us and how he sees things differently than we do. Even our justice system. Uh, we read in the paper people are going to trial and they have a trial and a jury and so on. And we, we are supposed to be innocent until proven guilty and all of that. But there's a different approach that God has to things, different than ourselves. And we naturally think, and we have that statement, we're all innocent. But I think we'll discover God sees us differently than that in the Word. So the Word, once again, in this section, it was read to us already. And... Uh, But we'll read it again. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned and whoever does not believe stands condemned already because he has not believed in the name of God's one and only son. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but men love darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that his deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that it may be seen plainly that what he has done has been done through God. After this, his disciples went out into the Judean countryside where he spent some time with them and baptized. Now, you notice this is a different section. We had the first section. This is the next section. I trust you can see that. After this, Jesus and his disciples went out to the Judean countryside where he spent some time with them and baptized. Now, John also was baptizing at Ian near Salem because he, there was plenty of water. And people were constantly coming to be baptized. This was before John was put in prison. An argument developed between some of John's disciples and a certain Jew over the matter of ceremonial washing. They came to John and said to him, Rabbi, that man who was with you on the other side of Jordan, the one you testified about, well, he is baptizing and everyone's going to him. To this to this, John replied, a man can receive only what is given to him from heaven. You yourselves can testify that I said I am not the Christ, but am sent ahead of him. The bride belongs to the bridegroom. The friend who attends the bridegroom waits and listens for him and is full of joy when he hears the bridegroom's voice. That joy is mine and is now complete. He must become greater. I must become less. The one who comes from above is above all. The one who is from the earth belongs to the earth and speaks as one from the earth. The one who comes from heaven is above all. He testifies to what he has seen and heard, but no one accepts his testimony. The man who has accepted it has certified that God is truthful. For the one whom God has sent speaks the words of God, for God gives the spirit without limit. The father loves the son and has placed everything in his hands. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life, but whoever rejects the Son will not see life, for God's wrath remains on him. Having a clear focus is important depending on what we're looking at. We have a microscope. Some ever look through a microscope? Many of you have in school. Microscope, binoculars, look through binoculars. Some people look at binoculars to see deer in the distance or turkey or, or ducks or whatever. Telescope. Ever look through a telescope? Have a camera? 
The camera wants to come into focus. How many like how many like blurry blurry pictures? Right, you save them all, right? Because you like blurry pictures. No, no one does that. No one wants a blurry picture. In fact, you discard those pictures until you get the right clear picture of what you want to keep with you for a memory that you have. Well, God has a memory. He has a real vision, a clear vision of everyone. We may not at, at right away believe that, but God he created us and he has clear vision of everyone and everything from beginning to end. There's no one like him. If you were to take a picture of yourself again, would you uh, accept a blurred picture? Well, there are basically three snapshots I would uh, try to present in this section. Three snapshots. And the first one is in chapter 3, 16 to 21. God's vision of his own heart toward us and of our hearts toward him. He already sees. He knows his heart toward us. But do we always see our heart toward him? How difficult it is, is and you can laugh at this, and some people go through this. I've already received uh, notification for hearing aids. I've reached the age where they send them to me. They, they never send it to me as a teenager. I don't understand why, but sometimes I didn't listen to my parents, listen to other people. But I received notification several times. Becky laughs because it's true for hearing aids. How difficult it is to, if someone needs a prescription, if they don't think they need one. How's that go? How about wearing glasses? Everyone wear glasses? I can see. I can see fine. You ever do that? Some people are like that. How about if you don't need hearing aids, but everybody at all, you, everyone says you need hearing aids, and all you, all you, but you don't think you do, but everyone that talks to you go, huh? Huh? I had that experience on the lake with the Amishmen. On the lake, the, the words of people, you can be a long ways, and that will travel right over the water. And these two older men were out there. We, they were a long ways off, but we could hear them. We could hear a conversation. We did not hear the words they said to each other, but we heard this guy talk. This guy said, huh? This guy talked. This guy said, huh? Huh? All we heard was, huh? 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 And we thought we were listening to a bunch of ducks. But it was, huh? It was, oh, we just started laughing so much because maybe some of you heard people like to hear them say, huh? Well, maybe you've said it too. But it's humorous in that sense. But we really want to have clear vision, clear hearing. It's very important to us in pictures. But again, the emphasis, God has a vision that he sees us the way we are. And in his vision, a servant whose focus is in the right place. And servants who need a focus adjustment. That's the second part. That's with John and his disciples. John is the one who has clear vision and clear seeing. But these other followers do not. And the third focus adjustment initiates living in truth. Truth focused in 31 to 36, and life change evidence of the character of Jesus being developed within us, becoming like Jesus. God's vision of his heart toward us. He, in these verses, in this first part, 16 to 21, God has the clear vision of his heart. He's expressing his heart toward all of us. All of us from all time, every person, his love for people in the world on the one hand and his condemnation of the world on the other. And our hearts toward him that men love darkness 
instead of light. That's our condition. He sees it. His love for us is constant, the same, doesn't become any greater, doesn't become any less. He loves us. Sometimes I think our fellowship with him affects our understanding and defining his love for us. Because sometimes, even when I received Christ at 14 and experiences I had in life, well, Lord, do you really love me? Do you really love me? In fact, it's the very turnaround upside down when you come to the end of John. Who does Jesus say that to? He says it to Peter. Do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? He loves us. And may we allow God, his spirit, to help us to grasp that truth that he loves us. And also the truth of, of what he says of our own hearts, that we love darkness instead of light. That our condition of lostness, that we are condemned. The different look and vision because we are in the culture of innocent to proven guilty and we understand that from our viewpoint but his viewpoint we're already lost we're already condemned because we have entered into the world out of fellowship with him out of fellowship with God out of a right relationship with him and he loves us and cares for us and desires to redeem us. But he's letting us know his great love for us, but also our condition. And there are many people who only, only emphasize the love of God and do not think about the real condition of their own human heart. That they're condemned, they're lost. They love darkness instead of light. Our deeds of evil may not be the same, but they are still evil deeds. Our condition of lostness. Men love darkness instead of light. And here's the verdict. It, it's interesting, the verdict's already been given of condemnation. Of uh, the sentence has already been carried out. In our system, again, innocent to prove you go through the trial, then you receive the sentence and so on. But God already sees the picture. He has the clear vision, the picture, like a portrait. His hearing is perfect. He knows all things. We're already condemned. The verdict's already been given. But that doesn't end there. Because he's the one who can change the verdict. He's the only one that can change the verdict of guilty and condemned and forever outside of a relationship with himself. Though the verdict has been given and the condemnation is present, it's not that people are waiting to go to the judgment. They've already been condemned. They're already heading to judgment. It's, all, it's a reality in God's mind and heart that we're already condemned and already judged but again he can change the verdict he offers the only one who can offer the hope of redemption in the giving of his son and that's the reason for the giving of his son that he more than anyone else desires to change the verdict that he himself because out of his own being and holiness over the lostness and sinfulness of humanity. Only Christ can redeem us through his shed blood. Remember how the groom, the groom what? In our society, kind of, we do the best we can to care for our children when they get married and and the relationships of moms and dads and sons and daughters at marriage. And usually the night before the rehearsal. And there's a little snack and dinner after the rehearsal. And usually the who takes care of that culturally? The groom. Who takes care of the many times? Who takes care of the next day? Bride's parents? 
many times. And, and people try to work at different, get married in different ways and pay for this and that. And they work it out. That's kind of our culture aspect of our culture. But in their culture, again, the groom pays for everything. How's that? Groom pays for everything. Well, Jesus is the groom. And he paid for everything. He paid for everything. So the whole salvation experience, the whole new birth experience, the whole experience of dying and being transported into heaven and being with the Lord and with other people who have gone before us, Jesus paid for the whole thing. And every experience we'll ever have in eternity, Jesus shed his blood, paid for the, everything we'll ever experience. He took care of the verdict. We only can change by believing in the offer of his son, Jesus Christ. Reception of eternal life is now. We're not waiting well, we're, we're trying to be good, and, and some people think, well, my good works outweigh, my good deeds outweigh my bad deeds, and if I these weigh more, I'll get in. No, the verdict's already been given. Condemnation's already been given. And forgiveness and grace and mercy's already been given. Eternal life can be received now, not waiting for it when we pass away we receive eternal life when we receive jesus as our lord and savior we're born of his spirit reception of eternal life is now the verdict of god for all people is given from a heart of compassion knowing your condition god knowing your condition loving us in spite of it no wonder we write hymns and songs greater his love is greater than our sin his grace is greater than our sin because these people right just realize god loves me more than i understand he knows all about my faults all my sins he has the power to forgive me and even as a believer in jesus as lord and savior i might stray and walk not away and not walk with the lord i might be like uh disobedient to god but he forgives us we come back into fellowship with him as I've illustrated, my wife and I have been married well, over 45 years. I know I'm really testing myself. Uh, the reality is, there's short accounts. Forgive me. I love you. I'm sorry. There's, we don't have to get married again. And there's a reception of Jesus. Pardon me. But there is the fellowship we have depending on our heart with him. And walking with him. God has a verdict. That he can give us. A heart of compassion. He knows us. Loves us in spite of who we are. All we've done. He has the power to change our verdict. By our reception to believe. Our value to him. Is in the gift of his son. We're of more value than we realize. A lot of times. Uh, we can grow up. Our children grow up thinking. We love one more than the other. But that wasn't true. We love all our children. All two of them. And love them all the same. And express our love to them the way the Lord wants us to. We care for them. But we know that only God by his spirit can change their hearts as well. And they, have, they need a walk with Jesus and receive him as Lord and Savior themselves. And commit their lives to him. God's vision and... The second snapshot is a servant who is no doubt following Jesus, John the Baptist, in chapter 3, 22 to 30, whose focus is in the right place. John's value of Jesus and himself has the right focus. John realized his value, learned his purpose, and experienced joy. He, his heart is in the right place. When I look at John the Baptist, I see someone who's following Jesus with complete love and trust. Uh, he had his questions, especially if you're about ready to lose your head. I think I'd have some questions too, and that's understandable. 
tremendous stress he had to go through uh, in prison with Herod and uh, having his brother's wife. A lot of stress John was under, but here John is a loving, faithful person to Jesus. And this person, even coming, to, they came to John in verse 26. They came to John and said to him, Rabbi, that man, well, who was that man? <laughs> who's Jesus? That man who was with you on the other side of Jordan, the one you testified about? Well, he's baptizing and everyone's going to him. Boy, isn't it, are people like that? They're like that. Oh, my. It, it can be any area of life. Sports figures and employment or wherever you work. It, well, they're, they're, they're all going to him. <laughs> they're not coming to me like they should. They, they're, they're all going to him. Well, hey, okay. Look at the human heart in darkness. Our, our jealousy, our bitterness, our resentments, and our... It all comes... Whether we like to hear it or not, do we understand our value to God? And I have to be honest with you. I did not understand value until I went through pain. I don't understand value until I went through pain. And then many things are learned through pain in life. That many, even people who have received Jesus as Lord and Savior... And, and read the word and pray. We do not understand our value until we come to the most difficult parts in our life and times in our life when we realize and we think someone cares and anyone think of me or am I all alone? And God by his spirit breaks through and takes a snapshot of you and said, this is the way I see you. I love you. I care for you. You're in my hands. I'm with you. I'm not leaving you. I'm not forsaking you. And you experience the love of God in great, wonderful ways that lifts your value up. Well, you never experienced it before. And it happened earlier in our ministry. And the love aspect. I have God's love is, is, is vertical, but I need to experience God's love horizontal as well. And I say this only for my own God taught me. And I pray for the gentleman uh, that my sister-in-law was dating uh, years ago. And uh, she was dating him. And he was the, he, he not only worked at the plant, he owned the plant. <laughs> Talk about owning a plant. And I was at Minor Corners. And I was, and I was, was 25 people. And I had more cows per square mile than people in the church. I had 60 to 80 cows next door. We had 25 people in the church. I could hear mooing more than the amens. And the reality, but that's the reality. Wonderful people love the Lord, loved us. But. Talk about a change in economics. He worked. He he owned the plant that made the mold for the F-16 fighter jet of our nation. How's that? That must have been some income. I asked him one time. Hey, uh, how much it cost for that fishing pole? He went up. Oh, you don't want to know. How much did it cost? Uh, well, he kept his fishing pole to PCV pipe. I used PCV, PCV pipes for my dad when we put it in for the sewer line. <laughs> Little sick thing, thing like that. He used it to keep his fishing pole on in. So, you know, like me, you open the door, throw the pole in, shut the door, and you break off at the end of your pole. Well, he didn't want that to happen. Not with that pole. That's why it's in a beast. Well, and I held it in. I held it in. I love you, Becky. Her, we had two. David and Alicia were very small. Uh, kind of like just young and small. Alicia was a baby. And I just had to confess to Becky, I just can't, I can't, I can't, I can't do this. I can't, I can't. And I was 
valuing myself monetarily, and that absolutely would never be a comparison. Never. Because he made far much more money than probably one year than I'll ever make. But anyhow, Becky looked at me, and the, the value, I love you, honey. I was crying, she was crying, and she said, I love you. And my value went up hundreds of percent. How important is it is to know your value as a person? And, uh, and that's the ugly thing about divorce is uh, when you people sense a total lack of value. They're of no value at all. And that's not true. God values us. To see ourselves with God's viewpoint it is one thing. For God, through my wife, to, to help me to understand my value. But it's another thing for God, through his word and the experiences of life, outside your marriage and other experiences in life, that God intervenes and he comes down and he lets you know your value to him. You're a value to him. And only he, by his spirit, can do that. When you're sick or you have cancer or you're, you're without job, or whatever you're looking for, as you're seeking God, and he makes himself known, you alone know your value before him. And he's the one that lifts you up by his spirit. And no one can take it away. No one can take it away. And John is maturing, and far mature than I am, and he came to the place, don't, 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 don't worry about that. They're following Jesus. He wants them to follow Jesus. He must increase. I must decrease. I have my part in life. I'm fulfilling my purpose in life. And I have joy in fulfilling that purpose. How many people are like that? I don't think a lot of people. I think people are looking for purpose. Looking for value trying to experience it in different ways, unholy ways, when only Jesus Christ can give you your true value and true joy by knowing him and surrendering your life to him, like John the Baptist. To have joy in seeing people follow Jesus. John's heart was right in the right place. It's like if you had a farm and, and many, and some guys were there and they had to knock down all the trees like we did here. And then they pulled out all the stumps and they took all that away. And then they, then another group came in and plowed it up and, and, and another group came in and planted it. And then finally the harvest comes and, and all these guys, or they, all these men and women work together and then somebody, a group of people come along and say, well, yeah, that was a world wonderful crop. And the last guys, men and women that did it, yeah, we did pretty good, didn't we? <laughs> the harvest people are out there in the chest and we did a real, wait, we did really good, didn't we? Without acknowledging the rest of the people? How's that feel? Doesn't feel too good, does it? Why? Because we are to work together as a team. And there are people that sweat and, and work hard and, and give their all to take, care, take out the trees and the, and, the, and, and, and the stumps and everything and get it prepared for planting. Oh, the word says when we read, while well, you're building on what other people have done, you're enjoying the work other people have done. There's a foundation laid here that other people are building on. Jesus is the foundation we build on. And we keep building on the person of Jesus and our walk with him and our love for him. Yes, if... And it creeps in our own hearts, in, in, in including my own, 
we have to allow our Father to love us and care for us the way he so chooses. Not us praying, my will be done, Father, not <laughs> yours. That doesn't work. Thy will be done. It's very tough to pray. Thy will be done. He knows what he's doing. We may not understand all the ways God works, but we will understand in the end. Because we'll be in his, his school and in, in learning from the Lord himself. A focus adjustment. And God initiates all of this. Living in truth. Truth focused. And verse 31 to 36. When we allow the spirit of God to work in our lives. The word says the man who has accepted it has certified that God is truthful. That we begin, as we read the word, and we hear our culture, whatever culture we're in, and the language of our culture, that we are alone with God our Father, and allow his spirit to speak to us through his word, we realize he speaks the truth. He knows all things. And he can give us the joy and the peace that, only he can give. There are many experiences in life. Short term pleasure. Long term pain. There's plenty of that in the world. And as I said before. You can go in your car. Go down to billboards. And, and try it. You'll like it. And all these songs. Musical songs and billboards. And all the messages people give us. In the world. But God gives us the truth in his word. To keep our eyes fixed upon Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. And whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. We can experience eternal life now in developing the character of Jesus within us. So, where are we in the journey? Are we in the first part where? We have never received Christ as our Lord and Savior. Have we recognized the darkness in our lives and our bent toward evil? And you discover even after you come to repentance and faith in Jesus, we have the new nature born of the spirit. But we have our self where we're still in control, make decisions to follow or reject, to obey or disobey the Lord when he speaks to our hearts. We still make the decision. We made the decision to be married, what, in 1976? But we make decisions every day to remain committed to the Lord and to each other. It's an everyday decision. Have you received Christ? Have you repented and received Jesus as your Lord and Savior to the best of your knowledge? And or are you in the second group? We're following Jesus and this transitions of following the Lord and God uses other people in our lives. God's used people in my life before I came to Christ at 14 years of age while I was in church and in college and wherever I've been, God has used and even here, all kinds of people to help me grow in grace and knowledge of the Lord. He has with you. It's not just one person. There are all kinds of people God uses to help you come to Christ and grow in grace and the knowledge of Jesus. There are people, as Paul said, I planted Paulus water. God gave the increase. So God uses all kinds of people in your life and mine. Is there any jealousy we're working in our, in, in our lives and bitterness or resentment? And we need to be with the Lord to see where, what that, what's that about? Where did that come from? You might say, oh, I didn't know that was there, Lord. Well, things occur and some things come out in our lives to reveal the real us that he wants to change to become like him, to trust him with our lives, that he's in control. And to walk with him. To realize continually that he speaks the truth. The certified. Another word for certified is sealed. God seals it in our hearts. There are little 
landmarkers. Of, there was a day when I received Christ. There was a day when I really, really decided, Lord, I want you to have your way in my life. Lord, I want your will to be done in my life. And help me to follow you. Help me to marry the one you want me, if you want me to be married. I didn't. I didn't give the Lord uh, a list of what I wanted. I said, if your will be done. He brought it to pass. Unknown to myself, Becky had prayed the same thing in junior high. Uh, asking the Lord if she used to marry, to marry the one the Lord has for her. We both had dated other fine Christian you know, uh, um, women and, you know, and you know, men. Uh, but they weren't the ones for us. In fact, some of them married my friends. And that's all right. Thank the Lord for them. And are you growing in the truth? We're really in truth challenges today. It's a real work of the Spirit to help us be believers in the world, in our own country, in our own nation, and, and, and especially other believers in part of the world. And to keep our eyes on Jesus and love and serve him all our days. That's our real challenge. And I see the work of the spirit maturity in the lives of people in other countries. And when I went to school, again, briefly, when we were building this building, and I know other people came from the Middle East, some people came from Cambodia and other people, and they were rejoicing, rejoicing we were able to build this building. Rejoicing. Not jealous, not angry, not bitter, not resentful. And that deeply spoke to me. Where there were in some places they couldn't do that. And they were hampered in ministry by their own governments. They lived under their nations where they knew Jesus. But they were happy and joyful for me, for us. That really touched me deeply. And the second thing that really touched me, and we do this sometimes too. When I went to lunch or lunch one time with someone from Cambodia, someone I think from Vietnam or for Africa, someone else, and they they went to a went to a Chinese place. And they order they had to set at a table, order all their meals, we all had individual meals, and the individual meals came to our plate, and then they put all their plates in the middle all six or seven of them, and we had our own plate, and they had the spoons, and you could take out of the seven or eight dishes they ordered individual from whatever you wanted. You didn't have to eat your own plate. All the plates are in the middle. I don't know if I'm explaining it very well. It's coming across all right. <laughs> but they shared everything. That really touched me too. They shared everything. It's almost something to remind me of uh, Thanksgiving time. We get together a little, pull out, and we all ate out. But it was something every day for them. Very interesting. Every day. Shared what they had with a brother or sister. Very interesting. So you learn from other people in Jesus and other cultures that serve him. But he speaks the truth. Speaks the truth in our situation to follow Jesus. And to receive one another. And the more people who receive Jesus become a community. A community. And that's what Jesus developed. A community of faith in him. That loved the Lord and cared for each other. That's exactly what the Lord did. And he still continues to do. Praise his name. Shall we bow in prayer? Father, thank you for your presence. And you know perfectly everyone's heart. You already have the snapshot, Lord, of every person here. You know if their heart's right with you or not. You already know that. You have a clear vision, Father, of each person here. You know the verdict. But you want to make the verdict forgiven us. Born of your spirit, part of your family. And if there are any here or any in live stream in the future, Facebook or whatever, 
that this is the moment they ask Jesus to forgive them their sins and be their Lord and Savior. The Spirit of God, your Spirit, Father, convicts us of righteousness and of judgment. Your Spirit convicts us if our heart is right with you, God, or not. Your Spirit does that. I don't. You do. So may people respond to your Spirit's voice to their heart that listen to this now or in the future. And I also pray as, as a believer in Jesus, as many though are here that know Jesus and hear this, Lord, if there's bitterness or resentment about anything, that we will give that to you and allow your spirit to help, help us to see our value in your eyes, Lord Jesus. And, 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 and we need not just my wife or me, Lord, but we need, uh, we need to know the value of each other in our marriages and our children and relationships in our families. We need to know we're valued by each other. And that speaks more than many, many things, Lord. To know we're loved and cared for. And Lord, may we just endeavor to allow the evidence to build of who you are and what you've done for us. And commit our lives to you. I pray for our children, grandchildren. Just as I, Becky and I prayed for each other. I still pray Lord. For the, if our young people are merry. The merry the ones you have for them. Because Lord you have. The ones you have for them. And I just pray we'll be obedient to your heart. And leading. In every area of our lives. Not just marriage, jobs and work. And the whole future of our children. And young people Lord. We seek your face for our next generation and generations to come. Do the work, Lord, we pray. We'll hear your voice and follow you. In Jesus' name, amen. Shall we turn to 199?
bless you. May you have a wonderful day. Thank you.